Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to show you how I use Notion to make YouTube videos. I've only been making YouTube videos for about three months now, so there are a lot of other people out there that you can learn from. But sometimes I think it's helpful to learn from people who are at a similar skill level to you, people who maybe are not as advanced, which is definitely, uh, I fall squarely into that category. So I'm hoping this video will be helpful for any of you who are just starting out on YouTube and uh, looking for a way to capture your process. I think Notion is a great tool and I'll be showing you the different templates that I use to get things done. So I'll be covering my YouTube Notion project template, how I use Notion to write scripts, film videos, edit them, and also post them. So I'm a big fan of Ali Abdal's and I took his Final Cut Skillshare course uh, back in uh, June and I used what I learned to make a video called How I Read Books in Motion, which is somehow on the algorithm and has about 15,000 views, which is a lot for me as someone who is really new to YouTube, but obviously not very much in, in the grand scheme of things. And I've been copying some heat for, uh, I guess, uh, copying his style and how he does things based on what I learned in his video. And it's made me reflect on uh, creativity and the creative process and everything that I've read and learned and listened to about creativity and, and, and starting a new creative endeavor talks about the benefit that you can get from copying other people's styles. David Perel had a really good uh, Twitter thread on this recently and he talked about the benefit in copying others from a writing perspective and how lots of famous authors would copy their favorite authors and try to understand their style and how they did things. So Ali Abdal also mentioned this on a podcast. In terms of how I think about the videos, honestly, I just imitate other people. So at the start, I told myself I want to be the Peter McKinnon of studying. And so I tried to model my videos based on his. Through that imitation over time, I feel I sort of developed my own style. And I think the more you imitate, the more you kind of develop your own style over time. I hope that if I work hard, as I start to develop my own style, uh, maybe in the future, someone will be copying what I do and how I do it. And they'll be learning through what I've learned and, and what I put out as well. So the first thing I'll do when I'm making a video is to go into my projects database. If you'd like to have a look at my Notion workspace in more detail and specifically how I'm using Tiago Forte's power methodology, I've put together a video uh, where I've covered that in, in more detail and I'll include a link in the description to that if you'd like to have a look at that. So I'm really trying hard to get better at writing down ideas as soon as I have them. It's funny how your consumption of content changes when you start to create it yourself. So these days when I'm watching a video or I'm listening to a podcast or I'm reading an article, I'm continually thinking about how could I use that in a video or how could I cover that in a blog post or, or write about it on Twitter. These days I'm really trying hard to learn about different things and instead of just passively consuming things, thinking about how can I create something from that. And that really helps me, I, I find personally, to, to learn things and to really understand things. Back to my projects list, the first thing I'll do, as I said, is I'll come in here, I'll have a look at all the different videos that I have uh, and different ideas that I've put together. So let's just say I've chosen how to do a Facet 5 debrief as my video for the week. For those of you who aren't aware, Facet 5 is a personality profiling tool that I am accredited in. I meet with employees after they've taken a, a Facet 5 personality test and I help them understand their results and I, I provide them with a debrief. Personality can be a bit of a controversial topic, but I think it is a really powerful and, and valuable way to get some understanding of yourself. If anyone would be interested in hearing more about Facet 5 and how I use it as part of my role and how I use it to debrief people, let me know in the comments section and I'll make sure I, I put that video together. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll open the Facet 5 project, uh, for example here, and then I will click on new video template. So as you can see, I clicked on the template and it brought up all of these different uh, components here. So the first thing I'll really do is I'll think about uh, the original idea. What is the idea that I've had? And I'll just jot down some notes on what I was thinking the video would be. It may change over the course of uh, producing the video, but I think it's helpful to have uh, something written down that I can come back and, and have an, an original idea. The section there, thumbnail, I'm really trying to get better at thumbnails. So I will write down three different ideas of what a thumbnail could be. For me, uh, the thumbnail process is really at the end of the whole uh, week when I'm just about to post a video. And so I'm just kind of at the end, I'm like, oh, I just gotta post this. Uh, so I can rush them from time to time. Uh, I am thinking about bringing thumbnails forward in the process, but 
agency. I also have a reminder there of the different tasks that I need to create and I'll go through and I'll create all those tasks which I'll, I'll show you in more detail as we go through. Okay so before we move on to the specifics of each of those tasks I thought it might be helpful to provide a bit of a bird's eye view of my weekly schedule and how I structure things from a day-to-day -day perspective in terms of filming and posting a video every week. So I work full time, I'm a dad to three kids and I have a fairly extensive schedule for dad bod mitigation. So I find that I have to be pretty structured with my time and manage it quite carefully in order to stick to a weekly upload schedule. I, I do try to upload videos every week. Obviously life does get in the way sometimes. If I'm structured with my time and, and I stick to a schedule, I find that I'm able to achieve that. So generally on a Monday, I will start to think about a video and, and what I want to film that week. If I have an idea, I'll write it down in my projects uh, database as you saw. On the Tuesday night, I will spend a couple of hours uh, putting together a script. I find that the more time that I put into the script, the easier it is to film the video if I have a more detailed uh, workflow and a more detailed plan of what I want to talk about. That's just me. I know some other people prefer to use dot points, but at this point, I prefer to script things out and, and have a clear idea of what I'm going to talk about. On the Wednesday, I'll continue to refine the script and work on it. And then on the Thursday night, I will generally spend a couple of hours at night filming the video. Once I've finished filming the video, I will then work on the edit process over the course of the weekend and then generally post on a Sunday afternoon or Sunday night, depending on how quickly I've been able to edit. Okay, so back to the tasks. Let's have a look at the script task here. So if I was to open this one up and have a look at this task, again, I have put together a template. So if I click here on script template, it will bring up a template that I've designed based on different things that I wanna think about when I'm writing a script. So I have uh, put together things uh, that I want to think about based on what I've seen in Ali Abdal's uh, video, which I'll include a link in the description. He goes into detail on what he uses for his script and also different things that I've seen online and, and things from books that I've read. So I'll generally think about the title, trying to get better at storytelling. I read a great book called uh, Storyworthy, which really made me think about how to tell stories and, and how to get better at, at storytelling. So I'll think about that. I think this is pretty much exactly the same as what Ali Abdal has in his script template. Obviously, if you're anything like me, as you're going around the internet and looking at different things, sometimes it can be hard to remember where you saw something. I really try hard to give credit to the original person who had the idea, but sometimes you'll you pick things up and you'll go, where did I, where did I get that from? But like I said, I, I try to give credit where I can. So in terms of the next section, I just work through the uh, introduction and hook. I've got a toggle list here where I'll bring up different guidance. Uh, something that I really liked from the story worthy book was it talked about uh, when you're telling a story to think about the dinner table and when you're telling stories to a friend or a family member, think about being natural. So you're really just trying to have a chat, but you're trying to balance that with, with confidence and, and not trying to sound too performancey or, or inauthentic. So I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, it does say in there to embrace your, your quirks, which my wife tells me I have plenty of. So I do try to bring those out um, from time to time. So story worthy, the book had a great uh, definition for a hook. Hook is an attempt to be entertaining, engaging, thought provoking, surprising, challenging, daring, and even shocking. What I try to do is I try to think about how can I build that concept and that theory into my script. So the next section is the body. Guidance is where I'm trying to add value. I'm trying to teach people something as, as I'm trying to do in this video. And then the final one, call to action, I think about pointing someone to a different video or asking them to have a look at different things. What I'll do is I'll point people to uh, different videos or playlists. And what I'm trying to do is to create an opportunity for, for people to learn. So sometimes I will put in a call to action around recalling and reflecting on what you've just learned, which is a great way to help you embed that learning, uh, which I got from a different book, uh, which I've covered in a separate video. So I also have uh, here some uh, three act structures uh, different ways to tell stories and I think I even have uh, Ali Abdel's example in here as well so this is what he put out on his notion template so that's something that I bear in mind so that is my script template okay so I've covered my script template let's have a look at the film template so this one here I will click on film template it'll bring up a template as I said if you are doing something regularly I think it's really uh, valuable to create a template so that you can just 
click something and uh, it'll just bring everything up that you need to do. So I'll generally think about the time that I was filming, uh, what my white balance setting was, microphone settings. I use a, a Zoom H5 recorder to record my audio and then I sync it in post, which was something that I picked up from uh, Ali Abdel's, uh, one of his videos as well. And so I'll just record the different settings and also the settings of the light that I'm using as well. So I like to record these so that if ever I come back and I think, oh, I really like the way that that video turned out, I've got things written down so I can reference them and, and try and replicate that process. Obviously, the best way to do it is to try and keep things as consistent as possible each time. Uh, but based on uh, the lighting that I have and uh, the environment that I shoot in, uh, sometimes it's hard to, to replicate things on a, on a consistent basis. Okay, so let's talk about the editing task here. This is the most comprehensive task that I've created. I put it together based on Ali Abdal's Final Cut Skillshare course. I click on this template, it'll bring up all of the different things that I wrote down as a bit of a checklist from this course. So I'll just work through those different components and different things that I've learned as well. So I've picked up other things around color grading. And so I put them in here and I make sure that I work through that every time that I'm editing. I'm not gonna go through this in a lot of detail because I think it's better for you if you're wanting to learn uh, to go do uh, Ali Abdel's course, um, but this is my uh, editing method and uh, this is what I, I use to edit videos uh, every week. So I find it's really helpful uh, to have a checklist. I read a great book actually uh, called The Checklist Manifesto. It talks about how you can use checklists to really enhance and, and increase your productivity. So I'll include a link in the description to that as well. That was a really great read and something that I, I got a lot of value out of. Okay, so this is the final task that I work through. As I said, I work through four key tasks every time that I'm making a YouTube video. I have my script, task, film, edit, and post. Post video task is pretty simple. It just has some reminders. As I'm going through and, and creating the video and, and editing, I'll say different attributions in here, just different things around my site, my Twitter, and also where I get my music from. And then again, just a little bit of a checklist. So I remember to make sure the thumbnail text is correct, attributions are there, end screens, all those things. Okay, so that's my complete process. That's how I use Notion to make YouTube videos. If you've enjoyed this video, check out my Notion playlist. I have a bunch of use cases on there, including how I use Notion to read books, how I use Notion for parenting, and how I use it to keep track of all the different things that I'm listening to or reading or watching online. I'm not a very advanced uh, Notion user. Some of the things that I use are pretty simple. If you are after some really clever stuff, you should check out Danny Hatcher or Red Gregory's YouTube channels. They have some really clever and intricate ways of using Notion. I'll include a link in the description to both of their channels. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I hope that it has been of value for you. If there is anything in particular that you liked, please do let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.